Oh my goodness, let's talk about Madonna. She's at number seven, her first top ten hit on my fancy playlist. And this was a mover on a very, very tight playlist. It was a big mover, relatively speaking, from number 12 to number seven, Madonna with uh, Borderline. <clears throat> fancy playlist, June 4th. 98, <clears throat> excuse me, 1984. I tell you, I looking back on it, and I think about this, starting in 1984, 1984, 1985, 1986, 1987, no matter what season, winter, spring, summer, fall, it was pretty much a guarantee that a hit radio by Madonna was being played on the FM radio stations, hot rotation. I checked some stats. Now, when you think of 1984, you think of the big stars, Madonna, Prince, Michael Jackson, Bruce Springsteen, and just out of curiosity, I wrote down, I counted the number of top 10 hits that each of those four artists had between 1980 and 1989. Michael Jackson had 16 top 10 hits. That doesn't include his the, the hits that he had with the Jackson 5. This is between, this is in the 80s. 16 top 10 hits, many of them from Thriller and from the album Bad. Prince had 13 top 10 hits between 1980 and 1989. The bulk of his the, the, the bulk of his top 10s were in the 80s. Bruce Springsteen had 11 top 10 hits between 1980 through 1989. There was Hungry Heart 1980, and then he had about five or six of them off the Born in the USA album, and then there was, God, Tunnel of Love. Love, Tunnel of Love, that album. Tunnel of Love, that, that single Tunnel of Love went top 10. Whitney Houston. Now, Whitney Houston was not known in 1984. She had her first hit in 1985, but I decided to include Whitney Houston. She had 10 top 10 hits between 1985 through 1989. Out of those 10 top 10s, seven went to number one. Whitney Houston in the 80s, now Madonna. And this is in the 80s between 1984 through 1989. Madonna had 17 top 10 hits. She had about 15 of them. She had 15 top 10s, around 14, 15. I counted them in the 90s as well, about 14, 15 top 10s in the 90s. But let's go back to the 80s, 17 top 10s in the 80s. After the 80s came to an end and the 90s, I got curious about the people behind the scenes who helped Madonna become successful. And that's not taken away from Madonna. Not by any means. But got curious about some of the songwriters who wrote some of her hit records. One of the point persons on this record, Borderline, is a guy named Reggie Lewis. He wrote the song, Borderline. And boy, he had a resume before he worked with Madonna on her debut album. One of the producers of her debut album, self-titled Madonna. It came out in 1983. The song Borderline, by the way, was recorded in early 1983, a year, about a year before it was released, before it became a hit. Over a year before it became a hit. Reggie, uh, Reggie Lucas, make sure I got that name, I almost said Reggie Lewis. Reggie Lucas had worked with a guy named James Entomb, and they worked together producing hit records by Stephanie Mills, including... Uh, well, Never Knew Love Like This. You remember that one from 1980. But one of the ones I like by Stephanie Mills, What You Gonna Do With My Love and Back in the Late Summer or Fall of 1980, 1979, rather, produced by uh, Reggie Lucas and James and Toon. Now let's move to this Madonna record. Madonna had about three songs that she had written. And then Reggie Lucas, he came in with a song that he wrote, Borderline. And he got Madonna to record it. Madonna obliged, but she was unhappy with the final cut. She said, Reggie, I want to add some things to this record. There's too, you got too many instruments on this record, on this cut, playing on this cut, too many instruments playing on this cut. And I like to make some alterations, alterations and some changes. And Reggie Lucas, well, for whatever reason, he was not having any of it. The album's completed. 
Reggie Lewis didn't, I mean, Reggie Lucas rather didn't make any changes. And Madonna's still dissatisfied. She takes the demo or the song, she takes it to her boyfriend at the time. The legendary dance disco producer, dance producer, Jelly Bean. He remixed Borderline and a couple other cuts off the album. When the president of a record company, Sire Records, Seymour Stein, he signed her. He signed Madonna when he heard the final remix after Jelly Bean got a hold of it. His first reaction, this is going to be massive. This is going to be a big success. And now he said something. Seymour Stein said something that nailed it on the head about Madonna. Uh, part of his quote, it's not really altogether a quote, the passion she put into that song, just, she, she was going to go places. See, that's the thing about Madonna. Even though she was not considered a great singer, people were criticizing her singing ability. But she made up for it, for all the passion she put into her records, the, the romantic, the, the uh, sexual passion. I mean, she just killed it. She nailed it. And she had a decent singing voice, at times pristine. Listen to Live to Tell, her intimate moment in Live to Tell, when it just broke down. The song just kind of was very quiet, and that was just her singing. Very intimate. Like, this is between me and you. I'm not just going through the motions. This is between me and you. And boy, she just pours it on in this record. Borderline. Well, Borderline, her first top 10, went to number 10 here in the States. In England, it did much better. Went to number 2 in Britain. Madonna at number 7 on my fantasy playlist, June 4th, 1984.